Untuk video kali ini aku akan buat dalam bahasa Inggeris kepada mereka yang tak apa nak faham bahasa Inggeris turn on caption tu supaya korang dapat subtitle. Okay, for those who just first time visit my channel, my name is Shaiful Baker. In my last video, I review the A6100. Some of you comment saying that please review the A6600. Today, I'm in Bukit Kiara Extreme Park where I'm going to shoot people playing skateboard or maybe rollerblade and it's perfect place for, for me to test the autofocus capability of the 6600 and also to test the stabilization of these cameras. Let's go! This camera, as mentioned by Sony, is a flagship of the APS-C model. I used to hold A6400, I used to hold A6100, then the A6000 and the A6500. But when I first hold this one, I can feel the grip is totally different. So as you can see here, it is deeper than the previous model. Similar with the A6500, it also has 5-axis in-body image stabilization. This time, Sony decided to use ZAC battery for the APS-C cameras. So basically this battery, according to Sony, it can shoot up to 800, more than 800 images. Better battery capability compared to the A7 series. On the battery compartment slot here, now the memory card, they put it on this side, it's not on this side anymore. This is how you put the battery. Put it there and proceed. So basically this camera is gonna be amazing for videographers because of the mic jack and also now we have the headphones. Notice one thing, this camera doesn't have built-in flash anymore. There's empty here. There's no more built-in flash. To me personally, I don't really bother about not having the built-in flash. I don't really use flash because I get used to full frame, uh, Sony full frame mirrorless. Those cameras don't have flash at all. And most of the time, if a camera have a flash, I never use it also. So I don't really care a camera having a built-in flash or not. Because most of the time, if I need flash, I will use external flash, which is much more powerful, much more better. More control can be done on the external flash. For the image sensor, this camera still use the same as the H6500, which is a 24.2 megapixels. For photography, this camera able to shoot 11 frames per second, 8 frames per second. This camera have almost similar with 6500 and uh, I don't see any big difference in terms of image quality also. In terms of ISO capability, you can set it also from 100 to 32,000 ISO and you can expand it to 50, from 50 up to 100,000 ISO. So basically, who shoot with 100,000 ISO? This camera have the same autofocus point with A6400 which is 425 autofocus point and it can focus in 0.02 seconds. In terms of real-time tracking capabilities, this camera is able to shoot eye autofocus in photo and also in video. However, in picture profile, now this camera have uh, HLG video recording. I've been using a lot of HLG picture profile in my videos and I love it so much. One of the most disappointing features for me is this USB port. This camera is still using the old USB 2.1 while other camera already use Type-C USB port which is much more faster and also much more secure if I want to attach USB on that port. So let's shoot some skateboarders. Let's go. Okay, this line just perfectly matched on these cameras. Small, compact and lightweight. And of course it's f4 not f2.8. Now I'm shooting manual mode. I set my shutter speed to be 1 over 800. f4, I saw I leave it to auto. Alright, and um, let's try. Focusing on this one is very fast and very good. Alright, that's nice. Alright, so you're gonna do some action here. Oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, this tracking is just on point. I feel like I'm using with E9 instead of um, A6600. 